Okay, I hope it takes. I'm here with Tom Short today. And he's going to bring the gospel on campus, as he does. I just met him, but we're brothers in Christ. And I would uh, wish you would just tell a little bit about what you do. Tom. All right, good. Well, I preach the gospel on campus. I've been, uh, each year we get to about 20, 30 campuses. I live in Columbus, Ohio, but we travel all over the United States. And and what we do is I have basic three basic things to say to the students. God is real. The Bible's true. Jesus Christ is the way back to God. But in doing that, uh, students, you, you know, they've got a thousand questions. And so once I get started, what today turns into is a time of Q&A where they're asking me their questions. I get some questions where people are really, really interested and they want an answer. Others where they're just trying to pick a fight, <laughs> and and uh, but I but I try and answer all of them, and it ends up being a pretty interesting day as we try and remove the obstacles to faith in this in the college environment, give them reasons to believe, and then uh, urge them to come to Christ. Well, sounds good to me. Thank you. Good. Thank you for being here today. Good meet you. Okay. But my book. What's the difference between my book and every other book here? This one comes from God. Now stop and think about that for a moment. All the books that you read and study and are assigned to you, they're the best efforts of human beings to communicate information, knowledge, research to you. Certainly fine, doesn't mean it's wrong just because people wrote it. Doesn't mean that at all. Might be great books, but this book well, their books tell you what people think. This book tells you what God thinks. If you want to know what someone thinks, you can read their book. If you want to know what God thinks, he gave us a book. How cool is that? I assume everyone here is literate. I assume every one of us has the ability to read. This is college. Of course you're literate. And God gave us a book. Now, some people say, oh, I tried to read the Bible, and I found it to be confusing. Well... Maybe you didn't ask God to give you understanding because the Bible's a spiritual book. Sometimes people read it, it doesn't make sense to them because that you've got to be guided by the Holy Spirit if you want to understand this book. Or sometimes maybe they just read kind of like in the King James Version and, you know, they're, they're not into saying a lot of dust and mouse and ST at the end of every word they pronounce. And they might do better reading a more contemporary translation of the Bible. Either way, this is God's Word. This book can tell you things you could never know about yourself otherwise. It can tell you things you never know about God otherwise. This is God's revelation. So Judaism, something other than space, time, and matter, had to have caused the universe. Something other than space, in other words, it's, it's infinite. Something other than matter, it's spiritual. Something other than time, it's eternal. Something that was infinite, non-material, I'd say spiritual, but non-material, eternal, had to make the universe which is composed of space, time, and matter. And you know what? That's the definition of the God of the Bible. That's the definition of the God of the Bible. Don't you ever get an abortion. And if you've had one, you better ask God to forgive you. You better say, Jesus Christ, can you say sinners? I admit, I sin. I sin big. I've killed my own child. You forgive me. And don't, and, and you can. Boy, you better ask. You better ask. You better be. My dad said he was going to get an abortion if I was pregnant. But he was going to get We would rejoice if you would uh, become a believer in Jesus. Are you?
to the hospital, and it turns out what happened, she had a thing called, uh, a, a, a genuine medical thing called broken heart syndrome. And broken heart syndrome is where you feel something like a, a pain or bad news or something, so intensely that it literally makes your heart malfunction. And she was in uh, the hospital there in five days, needed a period of recovery. And we believe that blessing is already coming to the whole earth, and we're a part of it. And he said, oh, so you're, you're a Christian. And I said, yeah, we are. He didn't realize he didn't realize we weren't. And uh, and I said, and he said, uh, well, Jesus couldn't be the Messiah because he's not God. And I said, well, he said he was God. And and Abraham said, really? Where did he say that? And for the next three hours, we talked about why I believe Jesus is the Messiah. And he really, really enjoyed the time. We had a tremendous discussion. Uh, it was maybe the highlight of my trip in Israel. Well, one of the highlights. I mean, pretty cool that you go to the tomb where Jesus wants to lay that. That's, that's kind of a highlight. You know, or the Tom Short place is where he describing the water, the sea of that's cool. uh, a trip you know, to Israel. Pretty cool sites. But on a personal level, also, I really enjoyed that discussion. And uh, we welcome him.